Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the words of Gavin and Stacey, what's occurring? I'll tell you what's occurring. I took it in for its MOT and uh, went through no problems at all. I thought, great, but you never get off that light, do you? Got it back home, put it back on the drive. I was just checking the underneath um, because um, I always do make sure they've not damaged it while it's been in the garage up on the ramps and I noticed that there were some drops of fluid on the ground and I thought is that because there was a little bit of rain earlier on today was there has it just dripped from somewhere or is it something else I should be so lucky eh? lucky 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 um, it's a bit ironic isn't it don't you think and um, Anyway, it turns out I had a water leak. So what was the issue? Well, strange enough, I'd noticed the last couple of weeks when I'd taken it into the, uh, started it up, um, there was a little bit of a squeak, which I'd never had before. And I never thought much of it. I should have done, but I thought he's one of the belts loose. Does it need tightening? So after it had been MOT, I said to the tester, um, did you notice it squeaking at all? Is it the belt's okay? He said, oh, the belt's as tight as I dare put them. I said, right, okay, that's fine. And as I say, when I got back home and I noticed the um, water on the ground, I thought, yeah. And I thought, let's have a look. Put the bonnet up and it appeared that I had a leak from the water pump. And um, that made sense because the water leak from the water pump was dripping on the belt so when it started it was slipping. So the next step, get it into the garage um, find out where we go from here. But at the end of the day, I suppose every cloud is a silver lining. Not that I wanted to spend any more money but I was due to change the antifreeze in it anyway and with the V12 one thing you need to take care of is the cooling system. and. Um, so I was contemplating uh, changing all of the hoses at the same time and giving the cooling system a good thorough going over. So I suppose it's all got to come apart anyway, so just as well that uh, the water pump goes now than get it all done and then the water pump goes. So we'll see where it goes from here anyway and uh, we'll see you later on. The first problem, where do I take it? Um, because my uh, local so-called Jaguar specialist doesn't want to know because they're only interested in Jaguars that can actually plug in on a machine. And uh, obviously my local garage, um, it's too much for them. It's not something that they're familiar with. And so nobody wants to touch them because they're big boys' toys. The nearest Jaguar specialist that I can think of um, is about 60 miles away which obviously the car's not going to go there because I'm not going to drive it and risk anything. So I'm facing um, having it trailered somewhere, um, which is all additional costs. And then I came to think about a garage in my local town, which has been there for as long as I've ever known. And in the past, they've always been known for dealing with quality cars. Um, I mean, they've... Uh, always used to work on Rolls Royces and Bentleys. So I popped down, had a word with them, explained I was looking to find somewhere to uh, look after my Jaguar. Um, would it be something they would be willing to take on? Um, and they said, yeah, no problem. Um, we're very busy, but uh, if you're willing to work with us, we'll fit it around the other work. And if you're not in a rush, um, then yeah, we'll do that for you. Um, so great. Um, so I took it along one uh, late October morning. Unfortunately, um, we hadn't got any salt on the ground, so that was good. And you'll see from the exhaust that uh, how cold a morning it was. So we're really getting into late autumn there. Now, as I said, I, I wasn't in any rush, so I was quite happy for them to just take the time. And uh, I was grateful that somebody was willing to take it on, you know. The car has been keeping good company all this time uh, with... Uh, the owner's 1929 four and a half litre Bentley um, just tucked away in the corner. So I explained what I wanted, which was basically it needed the water pump. 
but I also wanted to give the uh, cooling system a thorough going over, uh, which meant I wanted uh, new hoses, um, all the hoses replacing. It's not worth skimping on a job like this. Uh, it's very important that you keep your engine cool. Um, I wanted the uh, engine flushing through separately. Um, I wanted it, um, the radiator flushing through separately and I wanted the heater matrix flushing through separately and I wanted it all back flushing. I wanted it flushing through both ways and I wanted to make sure that all the waterways were nice and clear and clean. I also said I wanted to know what the state of the radiator was like and if it meant we had to replace the radiator then we'll do the radiator as well. Um, I wanted to see what the colour of the water was like when they when they flushed it out. Um, and uh, obviously I was interested to know about the um, uh, radiator fan because it was the original radiator fan, which you can tell because they are yellow, uh, which means that they've been on the car for 30 odd years. Now, these over time are susceptible to hairline cracks. And if um, for any reason the fan should fail, I understand um, that they can do quite a lot of damage um, as they disintegrate and uh, fly all over the place. Um, and so it's not worth taking that risk. So there were all jobs that we needed to, uh, to take care of. First thing was they drained the antifreeze and um, they said, yep, yeah, yeah it looked, looked nice and clean. And um, I asked what the radiator was like. Um, they said, no, no, that all seems nice and clear. That's, that's all good. Um, and they showed me the radiator, uh, which all looked fairly uh, decent. And I think it had a replacement radiator. So that's all good news. So work progressed. The first issue was getting the water pump off. Apparently, um, one of the bolts previously had already sheared. Um, and quite a few of the bolts were already seized. So the garage said to me, that's uh, no, no problem. Um, we'll get it sorted, um, but um, if I can't get enough leverage to get the, the studs out, um, then we'll have to take the, the whole front end off. Um, and I said, well, whatever it is, it is. To be honest, I thought it was quite optimistic that the work would have to take the radiator out and the condenser and everything else. Um, but they seemed to think that they might be able to get away with it, which I thought was rather optimistic. But I thought, well, they know what they're doing. Uh, left them to it and um, we'll see what's what. Anyway, um, they found out that they couldn't get the, the bolts out. Not They didn't have enough space in which to work, which was no surprise to me. And so they'd have to take all the, uh, all the belts off, of course, um, the radiator out, the condenser out. But at least they didn't have to take the bonnet off. So despite saying originally I wanted all of the hoses replacing, after the garage had stripped everything down, they said to me, that it didn't really need them all replacing and it seemed unnecessary. Um, and so they said there were a few hoses that they did feel did need replacing. Um, and so I said, well, I'll leave it to your discretion. Um, if it needs it, do it, um, which is what they did. And they did what they felt was appropriate and what was required. The water pump was out. As you'll see now, uh, the new water pumps in uh, all nice and silver and shiny. While the uh, radiator fan was out, um, I'd said to them, can I have a look at it? Is it all right? Uh, and they said, oh yeah, looks okay, yeah, fine. So I just had a look myself just to satisfy my own natural curiosity. And as I was actually looking at it, we did actually identify there were a very few very small minor cracks starting to appear in the original fan blade. Uh, so we um, were of the opinion, yeah, just replace it. For the amount of money it was going to cost to replace, it, it's already out anyway. So let's just do it. Um, it it's not worth the trouble, you know. Do it once, do it right. Um, so we replaced fan blade as well. And the new fan blades are black. So that's how you can probably tell that uh, they've been replaced. Because if they're yellow, they're going to be an old one. Doesn't mean it's not okay, but, you know, and, and probably the, the, the fan blade would have been okay 
But I just didn't think it was worth taking that risk, to be honest. And gradually, um, the horses go back on and uh, the condenser back in and uh, the radiator. Uh, and then um, the car's uh, nearly ready for me. Finally, the day comes um, and it's ready for me to collect. So I go down, um, tax the car um, and I pop down uh, to collect it. And uh, as I turned the corner, I see it's on the ramps. I said, what's going on? I said, we've got a problem. It's, uh, it's leaking water. It looks as though it's coming out the radiator. I said, oh, right, okay. Well, the question is, I'm faced with two things. It's either, either brand new radiator, which is about 900 pounds, or we can get the radiator taken off um, we could get it record uh, if that's what was needed locally um, or repaired, whatever it needs. So that's the option I went down. The gentleman doing the work was actually on jury duty the next week. So um, a couple of weeks later, I called back to find out what was going on. And um, the car was uh, about ready for me to collect. I asked, what, what, what did they do with the radiator? He said, nothing, the radiator was fine. Um, he said, I think what must have been the case that the, the bottom hose wasn't tight enough on and I think I had a perhaps a dodgy clamp that wasn't uh, as good as it should have been, but that's all good now. And basically the good thing that came from it was that at least I knew that the radiator has been thoroughly checked out. It's all been pressure tested. It had a fresh coat of shiny paint all over it to make it look pretty and at least we know that the radiator is good so yeah another 95 quid but it was worth it um at least i know that all is right there and um they've taken it for a run to make sure that everything seemed okay and um and then obviously i was able to take the car away again i'm pleased to say well at the moment i'm just um just making a check um each time i go out to make sure that Everything's as it should be, um, that there aren't any leaks, etc. Because uh, you need to go through heat cycles sometimes with these radiators. Is make sure that the expansion and contraction and tighten the clamps up um, to make sure that you uh, you don't get any further leaks. And um, so so far uh, everything seems okay. So fingers crossed. Just continue to keep an eye on things and just until I'm at that point where. It's restored my faith that everything is as it should be. But the temperature gauge is reading perfect. Um, we're not losing any water. So all signs are good. So um, hopefully uh, we're now right. Hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some summer motoring now. Another good thing was the fact that um, uh, for the first time I was able to get underneath the car properly and have a real good look at the underneath of it and see um, what it was like. And when I bought the car, obviously, I did have a good crawl around underneath. Um, and uh, I thought, yep, yeah, it is. this is a good car. And it was only when I actually got the opportunity to look underneath it properly when it was on the ramps. Um, it's an even better car than I thought it was. I already thought it was good, but it really is good underneath. Um, and that's uh, nice to know. Remember, everybody says it's cool to be a cat. It's cool for cats. Well, once again, thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it and the little update. And until next time, uh, take care.